We are well underway within the 2019 CCS Boys Basketball Playoffs. With the Open Division, we are down to four teams fighting for the title, three of which are WCAL members, and we have an epic battle here tonight in our semifinal game as the winner will play two days from now in the championship. Good evening, everybody. Alongside Spencer McLaughlin, I'm Carlo Jimenez, coming to you live from the campus of Independence High School, the host site of the 2019 Open Semifinals, as the number two seeded Rudin Crusaders face off against the number three Bellarmine Bells right here on YouTube Live and the Central Coast Sports Broadcasting Network. Well, for Bellarmine, head coach Patrick Schneider, one win down, two to go, and it doesn't get any easier for the Bells here tonight, facing a Crusader squad that has had their number during the regular season. Spencer, on paper, the Crusaders should be double-digit favorites, but for Coach Schneider, the slate is clean, and his squad needs to put the pass behind them. Well, I think Mitty learned that lesson the hard way earlier when they fell in the first round of the CCS playoffs. And, you know, when you get into one game elimination, especially in basketball, where it's easy for one team to just get hot or have one guy go off for a, a big night, you know, it's really easy to lose focus. So it's not something that that can get overlooked any team ever. I mean, we had a 16 seed beat Virginia last year in the March Madness tournament. So every team has got to forget everything that happened before. All that matters is the next play and the next shot. And, you know, whichever team is able to do that better tonight and avoid focusing on their mistakes will have a big advantage. And for the visiting Reardon Crusaders, the upset, as we mentioned, number one seed Mitty this past Friday, put head coach Joe Curtin's squad at the top as the top seed in the open division. And for the Reardon, for Joe Curtin, he wants to keep his young stars focused and not looking ahead. Spencer, all that sounds good. However, when you look at the teams left in the open division, how difficult is it to play these games out versus prematurely crowning yourself as the king when the number one seed falls in the first round? Well, it's building off of what we were just talking about. And this is the, this is the game that matters. Whoever won the game before, it, that doesn't matter. What, you know, what matchup you could have in the next game or how good you think your chances are for winning it does not matter what matters is the team that is in front of you the game that is in front of you there's going to be you know a lot of ups and downs in this game you have to weather the storm and you have to focus on the here and now and not feel any kind of pressure you know Reardon probably comes in as the favorite in this game but sometimes that can lead teams to feel tense feel like they have to win they're supposed to win and that they don't want to let down their teammates in their community as well so Sometimes that can play with teams a little bit. We'll see if Be Bellerman's kind of got that underdog approach tonight or if Reardon comes out confident and ready to go. And this is the third meeting between both teams with Reardon on the winning side, both times in double-digit fashions. Beating a team like Bellerman Spencer three times in one season would be a feather in any team's cap. And we'll see if the Crusaders are able to do that here tonight. I'm Carlo Jimenez alongside Spencer McLaughlin. This is a Central Coast Sports Broadcasting production of Game Night coming to you on YouTube Live. Tip-off is less than seven minutes away. Well, here are some recent scores for both teams. Reardon defeating St. Francis 69-53, to and Bellarmine able to squeak by St. Ignatius and ward off that second-half comeback, winning 57-54. to you're listening to the Central Coast Sports Broadcasting pregame show. Since 1972, your ultimate leader of team sports apparel and equipment in the U.S. Call John Gillette for more information at 408-209-6433. That's 408-209-6433. Let's jump into our Gonzalez Irrigation game-changing three-pointers. Since 1985, let Gonzalez Irrigation Systems provide design, installation, parts, and service for all your berry, row, crop, orchard, and vineyard needs, needs, including sprinklers, filters, meters, and booster pumps. And GIS proudly offers Netafim Irrigation products. Contact GIS at 831-675-2376. Well, the first one, reared in second place in the WCL. Really a disappointing season for this team that start, started off the year so well. At one point, had a two-game lead in league, and they lost two in a row, slipped from that number one spot, but they've won the last three. Now top-seeded with the midi loss, one win away from the finals, and looking at one win away, looking to play the eighth seed, Sacred Heart Cathedral team. How do you focus on Bellarmine tonight and not 
on that Cathedral game possibly on Friday? Well, I think what we're going to see early on in the game is whether or not they're focused on the here and now or whether or not they're looking ahead. If you see them doing the little things, fighting for loose balls, talking on defense, talking on screens, working and executing their offense correctly, then we'll know that they're ready for this game and this moment. But teams that are looking ahead generally come out flat in the early going. And sometimes that can spark them to lead a comeback and kind of you know put an, an energy surge in themselves you know when they realize hey we, we got to win this game we haven't been given anything we have to go out and earn this but early going indicators are going to be energy and little hustle plays and Bellarmine third place in the WCL they lost two in a row but the last two wins Spencer have been big ones defeating number one seeded Midi and then defeating SI on Friday uh, do the Bells give different looks? How, what has the difference been in this Bellarmine team uh, after the big two wins, and how do they change up the rotation against this Reardon team trying to not lose three in a row to the same team in one year? I don't think it's something that you can come in with an approach of, oh, we lost the last two, so we're going to change everything that's worked for us, unless you were trying a different approach in the other two games, which is unlikely. But if you're Bellarmine, you stick with what you know works and what has gotten you here. You know, they still came in as the number three team in the WCAL. They had a formula and a lineup and a rotation of guys that got them there. That's going to be your best hand, but it also means you shouldn't be rigid. You know, if a guy comes off the bench, he's given extra hustle or he's, you know, got the hot hand offensively or is doing something that the coach really likes, then he's going to stick with him. But you don't come out with a brand new approach that your guys are not comfortable or familiar with or able to execute on, in a routine manner. You have to stick with what they know so that they can execute and not be too phased by the pressure of the situation. And one head-to-head -head note, as we mentioned, we want the win to come to them. They just want to get the game over with rather than having a mindset of, okay, we're going to go play 32 minutes of our best basketball of the season. We're going to play as hard as we've ever played. And that's something that an underdog has always got because they go out there, they're lax, they're fired up, they're playing with nothing to lose. You know, I mean, obviously something to lose for, for Bellarmine, a shot against San Sacred Heart Cathedral in the CCS Championship on Friday up at Santa Clara University. But it, it, it's a different mindset when you come in knowing, yeah, they beat us twice, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it simply does not matter. All that matters, like I've said, is the next play, the next moment, and whatever happens tonight. Well, those were our game-changing three-pointers brought to you by Gonzalez Irrigation, serving the Monterey, San Benito, San, and San, Santa Cruz, and Santa Clara County. He's called them at 831-8. Six seven five two three seven six. While well, you're listening, ladies and gentlemen, to the Central Coast Sports Broadcasting pregame show. Since 1988, Coastal Grower Magazine has been a local favorite for people in the agriculture industry and those involved with the ag business here on the Central Coast. Visit them at www.coastalgrowermag.com. That's www.coastalgrowermag.com. Well, for Reardon, Spencer got to take advantage of your go-to players on the offense. It's got to be Bryce Monroe. It's got to be Jelani Clark. Maybe get Chime Uvaje involved. But for them, make sure your stars are playing like stars tonight. Yeah, and it's all about getting them going early. We'll see which one between Jelani Clark and Bryce Monroe, the two stars for this team, which one ten, it, it has the hot hand early. And we'll see if Reardon, Reardon decides to stick with one over the other based on who's playing well or if they want a more balanced approach and are going to be committed to getting both of them an equal amount of shots. And, and for Bellerman, got to mix things up, try to confuse this Crusader offense, which has been so proficient all year. Absolutely, and it's going to start by defending those two star players, Jelani Clark and Bryce Monroe, as we'll take a pause here for the pregame prayer and the national anthem.
Well, we want to give a big shout out to our another sponsor, Vulcan Materials, the nation's largest producer of gravel, sands, and crushed stone to keep up with this growing economy. For more information, visit www.vulcanmaterials.com. And going back to the defensive strategy for Bellarmine as we just barely ran out of time there, they're going to be focusing their attention, obviously, on Jelani Clark and Bryce Monroe. Everyone knows that those are the two-star offensive players for Reardon, both with several D1 offers, both have received offers from USF as well, the most local D1 university, except for maybe Santa Clara. But it, when you're trying to disrupt star players like that and guys who have the capability of taking over the game, you have to disrupt their early rhythm. If they get in it early go in the game, you know, get a couple layups inside, find some easy buckets, and then get their jump shots working. That's how big games happen. It's all about the early going. It's much easier to find an early rhythm, lose it, and then get back to it than to never have it at all and try to get it going much later in the game. Well, as we get both teams' full lineups announced here is the tradition at CCS, uh, not just the starters. We'll bring you the starting lineups by Netafim Irrigation, Jackson solutions, Dupree. offering the best in class irrigation solutions, helping you do more with water. That's Netafim Drip Irrigation. Jackson Contact Williams. Mark Clifton at 831-258-8089. That's Mark Clifton at 831-258-8089. Well, for the Bellarmine Bells, the visiting three seed in the blue jerseys, it will be Number Quinn Danker, Gio Sasso, Ryan Kieran Yashi. Cruz, Ian Elam, and Constantine Cole will not Number start, but he is Austin dressed. It will be, it looks like Ridley Ruth starting here for the Bells. Ruth had eight and points in their last win against SI and had big free throws Spartan down the, the stretch. A guy who didn't really play a lot during the year, number Spencer, six, how Justin important Miller. it is for number 12 to step up here tonight. I, I mean, it's crucial. Number you know, it can be really Ryan tough for a guy Vincent. to get inserted into a starting lineup like that when he hasn't had a lot number of experience, three, but Shane his ability to quickly integrate into this starting lineup Number with these Bellarmine players is going to be a testament to the team's three, overall three, chemistry three. That, that, that they've developed throughout the year, you know, in practice, Number off 20, the court. This is where that can really come into play when you have a guy who hasn't played a whole lot suddenly in a key Number role. 21, and for the Archbishop Reardon Crusaders, the starters will Number be Jelani Clark, Jose Bryce Anderson. Monroe, Chime Ubaje, Justin Turner, and Deshaun Johnson outside of Clark and, and Monroe Spencer who has to play well here for the Crusaders to advance to the Open Division Championship well I think Deshaun Johnson and Dominic Wilson can play a crucial role they're two of the better rebounders on this squad both with really good size and a potential to match up with Bellarmine's guys down low and you know winning the glass is not a flashy stat it's not glamorous and the work is you know not often well rewarded but it can really help you take over a game when you can limit other teams to one shot or when you can crash the offensive glass and get yourselves extra possession so we'll see how those two guys are able to match up with Bellarmine's front court tonight and so as the Starters get announced for both teams. Ruth announced, Jelani also announced. You mentioned the winner of the semifinal before the Sacred Heart Cathedral in the stands. They will be watching the number eight seed to see if they face the Crusaders, the Crusaders or the Bells. If you're Cathedral, Spencer, as the starting lineups continue to be announced, who do you want to see or do you have a preference? You, you can't care. You absolutely cannot care in that situation because you're either going to get overconfident if you get the team that you want, thinking, oh, that's who we want, the matchup is better, this and that, or you're going to be disappointed and inherently more nervous if you get the team that you feel is stronger. So, you know, you just got to watch the game and really what the Sacred Heart Cathedral players should be looking for is scouting both of these teams, looking to see what the best players best moves are on the court how they like to move the ball what they do defensively you know because when you're in the stands you get a whole different perspective than what you have on the court it allows you to see everything that's going on and able and, and allow you to analyze what's happening and then you can think about that you know whenever you play one of these teams on Friday and think oh I remember watching them do this they rotate this way that leaves an opening here or they do their press break like this so we have to jump the pass over here there's a lot of different things that you could look at so if I'm a Sacred Heart Cathedral player I'm watching this game very very closely to get a good idea of whoever my opponent's going to be. 
So the Bells will be in the baby blue away uniforms, being the number three seed. They'll be in the white script Bellarmine across the chest with white numbers and black trim. For the Rena Crusaders, it is the home uniforms, the white uniforms with Crusaders in script across the chest in purple with a yellow trim and numbers are yellow with a purple trim. It will be Elam along with Johnson to take the center tip as the Bells will move left to right, the Crusaders will move right to left. As we get set for this one, CCS Open Division semifinal. Reardon versus Bellerin about to get set. Here's the tip, and it's won by Elam, and Danker will walk it across the timeline. Danker, right side, gives it over to Ruth. Ruth will give it straight on to Elam. Elam, swing pass over to Sasso into the right wing. Ruth holds it above his head, finds the cutting Elam on the near block. Elam up with the right hand, and that one is... Too strong off the back iron. Danker almost came in there for the offensive rebound, but poked it out of bounds to Reardon. And Elam there early and aggressive, getting that flex screen, cutting across the baseline to the near block. Got a good look at the hook shot, but that time the birthday boy not able to get a birthday bounce. Yeah, Ian Elam, it is his birthday today. Looking for a win tonight for his Bellarmine team. Ubaje up top to Monroe. Ruth will watch Monroe. He has the tall task of guarding the WCAL first team all player as a sophomore last year. Here's up top, three coming. Turner, left wing, left it short, and rebound. Elam comes down with it, and there'll be a foul on Turner trying to attack the offensive glass, and it'll be Bellerin basketball underneath. And Ian Elam not showing any signs of being frustrated with himself, missing the hook shot at the other end. Good solid box out there, and it takes a lot of strength especially in the hands and fingers to hold on to that ball. Turner came crashing in aggressively going after that offensive rebound, but Elam able to hold on and draw the foul as well. Danker down the right alley, finds Cruz left wing, blocked away by Johnson. As with 7.05, still no score here at Independence. It'll be Bell basketball underneath. And I love the find there by Danker aggressively charging down the right side and a great feed but a better defensive play. Cruz, right block, finishes off the out-of-bounds play. Kieran Cruz with the first bucket of the night, Kieran and it's 2-0 Bellerman, tick under seven minutes to play in the opening quarter. And it's just a well-designed out-of-bounds play there as he was able to come across the lane and, and just too much confusion for Reardon defensively. Ubaje, right wing, working against Sasso. Takes it baseline, running out of real estate. They find Turner. Turner, swing pass over to Monroe, steps into an 18-footer and traveled. Bryce Monroe took an extra extra step, and it'll be Bellarmine basketball leading by a bucket. And I want to give credit here to Justice Turner, a really smart rotation as Ubaja gro drove baseline, got caught in the air, but Turner smartly rotated down to the corner. That's always where someone is supposed to be anytime a backside player drives baseline. Here's Cruz to Danker left wing. Danker brings it up now, being watched by Turner. Gives it over to Elam left wing. Elam. Holds it above his head. The junior starter finds Cruz. Cruz swing pass. Sasso right wing. And out of control there was Jelani Clark. Just ran into Sasso on the left block. And that's two quick fouls here for the Crusaders. 6-16 to play. 2-0 Bellarmine in the first quarter. And Jelani Clark just got caught flat-footed. It was a great pass thrown by Elam from the other side that was rifled across and caught Jelani Clark on his heels. Here's Ruth. Drives down the right alley, up at the rim, layup off the front iron. Elam comes down with a rebound, but it will be out of bounds to the Crusaders. And with a swipe it out of 33's hands, and Reardon will bring it up with 6.06 to play down two. It looked like it was Deshaun Johnson, who, who I think swatted that ball not only out of Elam's hands, but off his leg and out of bounds. That's a great heads up play there by, by the Reardon forward. Ubaje will find Clark, left wing. Jelani Clark had 22 uh, at Bellarmine, last time these two teams faced off, as here is Monroe. Monroe will wheel up top as they get the play call out. 15 to shoot for the Crusaders, still looking for their first points of the night. Here's Clark. Clark, crossover against Elam up top, drives into the paint, down low. Johnson, pump fake, pump fake, layup on the left block, doesn't draw iron, and Bellarmine will push. Here's Elam streaking down the lane, layup with the left hand, drops home. Twin tanker to Ian Elam in transition, and it's 4-0 Bellarmine, 5.20 to play. Here's Monroe, coast to coast, layup off the side of the iron. Sasso, another rebound, and here comes the Bells. Up by four, looking to add more. Sasso drives, left block, jumps in the air, finds Danker, left wing. He'll try from distance, in and out, and a rebound taken by Johnson. Crusaders down by four, five minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Clark, left wing, Monroe. 
Monroe holds the ball at the right hip, dribbles and gives it back to Clark up top. So Lonnie Clark will get the, coach, the call from Coach Curtin and find Ubaje near far wing. Ubaje to Turner up top, looking down low, back over to Monroe left wing. Monroe, right hand dribble, working around Sasso, gives it to Ubaje, three ball, left wing, hey, off the backboard, falls right to Turner. Shot clock did not reset, five to shoot. Now four, Ubaje will drive baseline, pulls from 15 and rattles it home. So a broken possession ends up in a bucket and it's 4-2, Bellerman on up top. Here's Danker driving. Pump fakes, pump fakes, up at the left block, left it short, and a sky high rebound there from Jelani Clark. Clark will push, two Monroe, left wing three, and puts it down. Three, Bryce, Bryce Monroe. Monroe from downtown, and just like that, Reardon up 5-4, halfway through the first quarter. And that is a smooth, confident stroke there from Bryce Monroe, and we mentioned early rhythm for the Reardon star players. That's a good sign early for Bryce Monroe. Here's Elam up top to Ruth left wing. Ruth being watched by Monroe, drives into him, loses the ball, now pulls it back out. Ruth picks it up, Danker into the far corner, now has it, Bell down one, 3.30 to play in the opening quarter. Danker, baseline, pump fakes, turns, finds Elam, far corner, three ball, buries it. Ian Elam, the birthday boy with a big time bucket, and it's 7-5, Bellerman on top. And Deshaun Johnson didn't need to double team right there, but did and left him open. Here is a three coming from the far corner. Turner could not drop it home, and the Bells will push. Crew looks, looking to go coast to coast. Lost it on the deck. Elam slides, but Cruz will pick it up. Danker now has it. Bellerman up by seven. Three minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Up by two, correction. 7-5, the lead for the Bells. Here's Cruz. Finds Danker. Thought about a three. Now will fire away. Straight on. Off the side of the iron. And another rebound there for Clark. Clark looking to push. Bounce pass transition. Monroe scoops it to Obaje. Left corner. Three. Too strong. And a good look by Reardon in transition is fruitless as the Bells move left to right up two. And it was a great feed by Bryce Monroe. Unselfish play. He could have forced a layup, but smart to give to his teammate Ubaja to find the open three. 2.43 to play here in the first quarter. Bellerman up 7-5. CCS semi-final game in the open division. Cruz, right wing, picked up the dribble. 13 to shoot, gotta find somewhere to go. Gives it to Elam, near elbow. To the far corner, Danker's got it. Danker drives by Ubaje, left hand layup, rolls around and out, and Ubaje pulls home the rebound. And reared and fortunate there, their backside rotations were very late on that drive. Here is Monroe, left corner. Monroe with a three so far tonight, will take it, now left wing. Cruz will watch him. Two former WCL first team players facing off here at Independence High School. Here's Turner, straight on, holds a bit of his head, finds Ubaje left wing, goes off a screen from Turner right side, Cruz switched on him, Ubaje gets a step, gets to the rim, finds Johnson inside, and the layup is short. A lot of contact, no whistle. Elon came straight over the back, got away with a foul. He did get the ball on the shot, but he pushed Johnson in the back first, but what a phenomenal wraparound pass that was from Ubaje. 1.45 to play here in the opening quarter, Bell's up two. Here's Cruz right wing, deep three. Kieran Cruz off the front of the iron and another rebound coming from Johnson. Almost has a strip from behind, but Clark takes care of it and he is fouled by Ruth in transition. And Clark had Monroe up ahead in the left corner, but wasn't able to find him immediately. But Jelani Clark right now showing his athleticism nearly every time down the court defensively when he's grabbing the rebounds. And right now he's having a conversation with Bryce Monroe about how they want to navigate the fast break. But Clark is snatching those rebounds and he's pushing up in transition in a hurry. And he is getting, he's putting a lot of pressure on this Bellarmine defense quickly. So 128 to play here in the opening quarter. Bellerman up 7-5. Clark has it left wing. Watched by the checked in Lewis. Crossover, three ball. Here's a three, and it's off the rim and out. Bryce Monroe correction could not drop it home from distance. And here comes Quinn Danker left to right. Even though he missed that one, you can tell Bryce Monroe is feeling good tonight. Here's Cruz, rip through dribble, attacks the rim. Euro's in the lane and traveled. And so it'll be Reardon basketball going right to left. Chance once again to tie or take the lead. And just an extra step there by Kieran Cruz. It looked like he might have had a solid move, but picked up that pivot foot as he went to the basket to lay it up with the right hand. So Reardon once again, once again fortunate to get a stop there as Cruz might have had a decent look if he kept his foot down. So one minute to play in the first quarter. These are two teams who usually do not have single digit quarters. Averaging over 50, both of them do. And right now it's 7-5 Bellerman, 50 seconds to play. 
Here is Monroe up top. Right hand dribble finds Clark left wing. Clark goes off a screen. Now has it straight on. Will fire from distance. Jelani Clark, nothing but nylon. For three, Jelani Clark. Eight to seven, Reardon on top after that one from number zero. And here come the Bells. Got a four second difference between shot and game clock. Lewis has it left side. Lewis will find Ruth up top. Ruth, the hero in last game against SI, finds Cruz in between the rings. Kieran Cruz holds it at his hip. Now we'll dribble, working against Reardon. Over to Ajake, who's checked in up top. Danker, Ubaje on him. Danker rips through, left hand dribble, finds Ruth with 10. Ruth drives, four to shoot, three to shoot. Give it up top to Danker. He's got a fire. That one's blocked, and they're not going to call the shot clock violation. Ubaje in transition, layup, drops home from the right block, and Reardon squeaks a back basket by and ends the quarter on a 5-0 run there of 10-7. And what a great heads up play there by Dominic Wilson, I think it was, who realized, who just kept playing. A lot of players expected the shot clock violation to be called, but Wilson recognized that wasn't the case, threw it ahead to Yubaja, who had a tough finish, but was able to get it from almost under the basket. That's a big heads up momentum play as Reardon now takes a three point lead into the second quarter. Shout out to Arnie Von Massenhausen of Home Services Lending. First time home buyer or looking to refinance your current mortgage? Work with an experienced mortgage consultant to find a solution that best fits your needs. Call Arnie today at 408-858-4906. Also, want to remind you, San Jose's hot country 95.3 KRTY. For the best in today's country music, sports, contents, and fantastic concert series, KRTY has it all for you. Coming March 28th, live from the City National Civic in San Jose, Brett Young. For more ticket information, go to the website, krty.com. Also, big shout out to our friend Kevin Moore, friend of the Central Coast Sports Broadcasting and making a difference in our community. Well, at the end of the first quarter, it is 10 to 7, reared and on top, ending the quarter on a 5-0 run, uh, Spencer. And they did it in only a minute's time, so it took seven minutes to score the first five and just a minute two to score the second. As we get the inbound here, it will be Bryce Monroe to bring it up. Checked into the game for the Bells has Nick Grassman. Kyle Lewis also will remain in after the first quarter. Here is up top Monroe, drives, hands it off down low. Layup from the left block coming from Wilson and he is fouled. Dominic Wilson, they just run that pick and roll inside and ask Monroe or Clark to try to find the cutter as Wilson will walk the line, chance to extend the lead. And Monroe doing a great job right there of doing just that, but it's really a well-designed play by Reardon. What it is is a three-man kind of dribble handoff motion up top, and they set kind of natural picks as they run by each other. Then when Monroe is moving to his left, coming off the screen, he's running a pick and roll with Wilson, who's already gotten a little bit of separation from his man because of the earlier motion, and just a great feed by Bryce Monroe, and Wilson connects at the free throw line. So 7-0 run here for the Crusaders into the second quarter. Grassman now right wing here for the Bell. Drives, pulls it out, and finds Elam up top. Left wing, they swing at the Cruz, straight on Grassman. Grassman, left hand dribble, Ubaje all over him, gives it over to Ruth, left wing, Ruth drives, ju jumps in the air, finds Cruz, going baseline, pump fakes, pump fakes, turns and finds Ruth, left corner. Here's Elam, now over to Cruz. Cruz looking for somewhere to go as Henderson watches him. Cruz dribbles, gives it up top to Lewis, turns and fires from 14, off the front of the rim, off the backboard and down for Kyle Lewis. It's a 12-9 lead for the Crusaders. And good patience there by Bellerman offensively, but earlier in the possession, much better rotations on the backside defensively for Reardon. Here is Clark, straight on. Gives it over to Monroe, left wing. Seven minutes to play here in quarter number two. 12-9 lead for the Crusaders. Monroe crossing over with the right hand. In and out dribble, dances in the lane, layup off glass and puts it home. Bryce Monroe just able to snake through the Bellarmine defense and get a deuce. And Bryce Monroe right there showing why he's a division one prospect. Not only the explosive dribble, but the body control to stay in the air. Here's Grassman, layup from the right block, off glass, high arcing layup from Nick Grassman, drops home and it's a 14-11 lead for Reardon. Here is Henderson up top, down the left alley, lost it on the deck, out of bounds, Reardon basketball. As Gio Sasso will check into the game along with Justice Turner. 
And we have a couple Bells. athletic layups on Bells. both Bells. ends. <laughs> I was going to say, credit to Nick Grassman answering at the other end. I mean, I mean, he was falling down away from the basket and out of bounds and somehow got that ball to go in off the glass, took a little contact as well. Just a couple of really impre pr impressive finishes by these guards. Here is Monroe, left wing. Lewis will watch him. They get Monroe on Grassman. Left hand dribble down the alley. Layup and one. Ian Elam was late on the block attempt, and Bryce Monroe gets a bucket, and now we'll walk to the line to try to add one more. And Bryce Monroe is not a big guy out there. I think he's listed at about 5'10". That, that might be a little bit generous, but what he does so well is uses his athleticism. Right there, he got into the air and was just too high for Elam to get over and contest the shot where the ball actually was, causing the foul, and he also had the strength and the touch to finish that off-handed layup. It's a really impressive move. If you're tired of fake food loaded with junk, then eat clean, go green. Try the Green Waffle, a delicious new alternative to healthy eating. Our newest sponsor, check out their website at thegreenwaffle.com. Com. And, and, and it's really what we were talking about in the pregame show. The star players for Reardon have been out. Clark with the three, but it's been Bryce Monroe recently. He'll be at the free throw line when we come out of this timeout. But Reardon so far has done a great job of getting the ball in their hands. And even though Clark, I think, has just the three points defensively, he's been very active on the glass. He's pushing the ball in transition, and he, he's not necessarily getting the points or even the assists that's creating a lot of the opportunities for Reardon, but he's absolutely Absolutely starting the break and causing the Bellarmine defense to go into a panic when he just grabs the ball and he's up court so, so quickly because he's got such explosive speed. So both guys having an impact in their own way. Bryce Monroe certainly on the scoreboard and he, he's just been doing it all. Yeah, one thing, the duo of Clark and Monroe have 10 of the 16 so far tonight. Monroe will walk the line to try to make that 11 and seven for, or eight for himself. Looking for a fresh, rich, Sicilian-style pizza? Come check out Pomodoro Pizza, 6932 Almaden Expressway, San Jose, for your ultimate pizza experience. Stop by today. Monroe's and one free throw drops home, and so it's 17-11, reared and on top, six minutes to play here in the, second in the first half. Here is Danker, hands off over to Lewis. Lewis up top, finds Danker left wing, flows out there by Henderson, now Danker crosses over, left hand dribble, driving down the alley, Bellerman gotta move the basketball. Here is Sasso up top, floats it to Ajake, Ajake layup left block and beautiful find by Gio Sasso as Ajake gets two. Here's a full court lob, that one looking from for Turner, Monroe threw it up there. I, and Monroe, I, I, I think wanted Turner to come down with that ball first, he threw it up like a lob Turner tried to finish it in midair, but I, I think Monroe was just trying to throw that ball ahead over the defense to the taller Turner and wanted him to come down with it first. But Reardon defensively right now, individually, each guy's locking in. Here's Cruz, down the left alley, layup with the right hand, and untouched through the lane goes Kieran Cruz, and it's a two-point game. Uh, the announcer jinx strikes again, I'll take that one. Here is up top, Clark, left hand dribble, crossover, jumps in the air. Monroe, left wing, being guarded by the CCS bring up Josh Wolfloom. He'll cross over and teach him a lesson. Bryce Monroe gets that one to go in and out, up in the air, and then drop down. It's 19 to 15, 14 point lead here for the, or four point lead for the Crusaders. And Bellerman right now, no answer for Bryce Monroe at the defensive end. Monroe with seven already in the quarter, as up top it is Danker. Over to Wolf Bloom, right wing. Wolf Bloom cross court to Cruz, left side. Into the corner, Danker, watched by Henderson. Down low, Wolf Bloom, layup, left block, and another point inside the paint for the Bells. This time, it's Josh Wolf Bloom. And it looked like it was Henderson who tried to deny that entry pass, but he didn't have any help on the weak side. He's got to know where his teammates are. Monroe dancing, falls on the deck, ball on the ground, Henderson comes up with it. Clark, left corner, wide open, three, too strong, and Danker will drop, bring home the rebound. Danker going full court, looking for Cruz, and that's an easy steal by Turner. Wolfbloom almost takes it back the other way, but nothing there, and, but just tips it out of bounds. 19 to 17, halfway through the second period, and this is a very different second quarter than it was in, in the first quarter in terms of pace of the game, Spencer. Yeah, absolutely, and the pace picking up right there, but Bellerman unnecessarily launching that ball ahead. There was really nothing there 
and it, it, it's just a senseless turnover in a close game. That can be crucial. Here is Monroe, Clark left wing. Clark back up top to Monroe, has seven in the quarter and 10 on the night. Monroe, crossover into the lane, throwing it down low, nobody there. As Monroe jumped in the air, didn't know where he was going to go with the ball, and the Bell is able to play the defense and force a turnover. Well, finally an answer defensively for Bellarmine on Bryce Monroe. He got to the free throw line where he likes to be, and he wanted to shoot initially, but he felt the defense collapsing from behind, tried to throw a pass, but no one was expecting it, so he throws it out of bounds. It's a great defensive adjustment there for Bellarmine. Here is Danker up top, in and out dribble, left hand, now on the left wing, takes a screen from Ajake, gives it to Sasso, Sasso pump fakes against Clark, back up top, Danker, right wing, Sasso, try from distance, Gio from downtown, and it is a 20 to 19 lead, Bellerman back on top, 3.30 to play here in the second quarter. And in Bellerman's regular season finale against Mitty, when they pulled off the the their biggest, one of their biggest victories of the season, that's where he hit from. Monroe looking to answer, and he will. Bryce Monroe, give him 10 in the quarter. Right wing triple gives Reardon back the two point lead, and he is feeling it, Spencer. Yeah, he is, and he is shooting with all the confidence in the world right now, not phased by the turnover in the previous possession at all. Sasso gives it over to Ajate. Josiah looking for somewhere to go, finds Cruz right wing. Up top, Wolf Bloom, left wing. Here's Denker, they swing it around now, do the bells, and we get a foul, and that's gonna be on Henderson, away from the ball. Or actually, it's gonna go on Wolfman. Offensive foul here for the Bellerman. One thing to note, Bellerman big man Ryan Kiachin hurt himself last game with an ankle, or last practice with an ankle injury, and just will not play here tonight. This is a big loss for the Bells with your 6'7 sophomore out of the game. Was it in their, their final practice before this game? It was. Oh, that's rough. 22 to 20, Bellerman down by two, 2.43 to go. Reardon looking to add more to the scoreboard. Here's a crossover by Turner into the corner. Ubaje, three ball off the back of the iron. Rebound, Danker over to Cruz, one on one with Monroe. Left hand layup, able to adjust in the air and get the bucket. Tied at 22, Monroe will push into the corner, Turner, Turner. Pump fakes, gets Cruz jumping. Now looking for somewhere to go up top. Here's Clark, Clark, left hand dribble, in and out. Jumps in the air, right hand at the rim, and off the side of the iron and down. It is a show here at Independence High School with these stars going back and forth. Uh, Reardon is not hesitating. Every time Bellerman makes a field goal, th they are out and running immediately. I mean, Monroe is almost a one-man fast break until his teammates can catch up with him. Ajake up top, Bell's down two, under two to play here in the opening half. Here is down low, Danker trying to go to Ajake. Ajake saves it from going out of bounds, and Wolfloon gets it on the near side. Wolfloon now up top, over to Cruz. Five to shoot, Bellerman got to go. Cruz looking for somewhere to go against Turner. With two, with one, fires three ball off the side of the backboard, but it falls to Danker off the long rebound. Danker pump fake, one dribble, pull up from 16. Buries it, and we're tied at 24. And a fortunate bounce there for Bellerman on the offensive glass. They did not get a good shot in that possession, but for fortunate to come away with the offensive rebound. And that is the first points of the night unofficially for Quinn Danker. And one of the Bellerman's leading scores has been held silent so far. Monroe up top. He has been the man of this second quarter. Has 10 points in these eight minutes. Crossover to the left hand. Now working against Sasso. Pulls a three left wing in and out, and Wolf Loom grabs the rebound. And he's at the point where he's expecting everything to go in, and everyone is expecting his jumpers to go in. And that one didn't fall for him, but it was halfway down, so Bryce Monroe is, is still feeling it. Here's Cruz up top, and we're going to get a foul on the ground against Reardon. It looks like this one's going to go against Deshaun Johnson. Trying to set a screen there for Kieran Cruz. So 48.6 to play here in the second quarter. 24 all we are tied. And no team really able to grab a big lead. The largest lead of the night so far, I believe, has been Reardon with six. After that free throw from uh, Monroe made it 17 to 11. For more than four decades, no construction company ranks higher in award-winning projects such as school, nonprofits, and tech campuses. Check out Block Construction at www.block.com. Danker gives it over to or is stolen away by Clark, but coming from behind is Ruth. Good hustle play, and they're going to say reared in basketball underneath. Jelani Clark had a steal, nobody in front of him, and then just tripped over his own feet, and Ridley Ruth was right there. And credit Ridley Ruth. It's really easy to give up on that play, especially with a guy like Jelani Clark streaking ahead of the pack. 
but you know, just tremendous hustle to make that happen. Here is Johnson looking to give it to Monroe. He does, Monroe, baseline, passes it to Johnson, and we got an offensive foul coming against number one. That's the first time we've seen that called as Monroe, in disbelief, will walk back on defense and the Bells will bring it left to right with a chance to take the lead. And it looked like Monroe wasn't necessarily wildly out of control, but I think it was Ajake who took the charge. He, he looked like he was set on the play, so I think that was the right call there by the official over on the baseline. And both, one thing to note, both these teams have stars on their, both, on their respective teams, Spencer, but the bench players are playing extremely well for Bellarmine and for Reardon. Here is Danker up top, left hand dribble working against Ubaje. About a three second difference between shot and game clock. Game clock at 24 here for the Bells. Here's Ruth up top, left hand dribble, tied at 24 here in quarter number two. Ruth will hold it straight on. Bells will set up the play looking to hold for the last shot of the quarter. They'll give it to Danker straight on, Ubaje right there. Ubaje pokes it from Danker. Danker now regains control, dribbles. Has to fire up. Does he see the shot clock? He does, and he puts it home. Quinn Danker got it off in time, and that is the end of the first half. 26 to 24, Bellerman with the lead. And what tremendous awareness there from Danker, not phased by the, hara the harassing defense of Ubaja out at center court, corrals the ball, knows exactly how much time he has, and just before halftime gives his team the lead. So. Like we were saying in the pregame, if Reardon came in thinking they were going to be a double-digit favorite, it's the playoffs. Nothing that's happened earlier in the year matters. Bellerman goes into halftime with the two-point lead. Stay tuned for the Central Coast Sports Halftime Show. The halftime spotlight will be Carlo and myself looking at the CCS playoff brackets. All coming up on the Central Coast Sports Halftime Show. And tune in for our next CCSB broadcast on February the 22nd, that'll be this Friday, for the Open Division Playoffs Championship game. Streaming on YouTube Live, a time for the pregame and tip is to be determined. That will play up at Santa Clara University, my, my home <laughs> most of the year for the last couple of years, so I'll be in a, a familiar spot up there on the campus of Santa Clara. Earlier Time now for our block Bob construction halftime. Donating Bell countless Arthur amounts of money and volunteer hours to provide critical services to charities and people in need. For more information, see their website the at block.com. And, and shout out to Arnie Von Massenhausen <laughs> of Home Services Lending. With Arnie, you are a customer for life. Let his products, programs, and services protect your largest asset, your home. For your financing needs, call Arnie today at 408-858-4906. You know, you know, I mentioned a moment ago that, that Santa Clara is, of course, where I, where I spend most of my time. I don't think most people know that. We were, do we were doing a game a couple weeks ago. I think it was over at, at, at Valley Christian, and I was talking to one of the officials, and he was asking me if I was part of an of a after-school broadcasting program. I said, nah, I just do this for fun. I'm in college. He looks at me and goes, nah, man, you're not a college student. <laughs> I said, no, yeah, I'm a junior in college. Psh, no, you're not. You don't go to a university. I was like, yeah, I do. It's for real. It's for real. <laughs> we're for real out here. We are for real. And we're at the midway point in the 2019 sectional basketball playoffs, the quarterfinals, or to the semifinals today, the most critical games of the tournament. The most critical games generally are the next ones. Spent, or Carlo and I will take you around the horn with each of the six brackets. Let's kick things off with the open division where, you know, we, we've mentioned the big upset. It, it was Sacred Heart Cathedral, you know, beating Menlo Atherton earlier and less of an upset, but the game before that, it, did, did anyone see that coming against Mitty? I don't think so at all, as it has been a, that was the biggest surprise anybody out of, if any of these games that we look in the first round, I don't think anybody saw Sacred Heart Cathedral who I believe had only won three games in league so far this season, defeating number one seeded Archbishop Mitty and advancing to the championship after fe defeating Menlo Atherton just a couple hours ago. So an interest that just makes things all the more interesting and shows, Spencer, anybody can be anybody on any given night. Well, in the Central Coast sports area, March Madness has come early because <laughs> that's, that's basically what it is. You've got an eight losing 
to a one or an eight beating a one there. Excuse me. So it, it's like I, I have been saying throughout the broadcast. It, it's it's playoff basketball. It's one night. It's one shot, one player, one moment, one call even that, that goes against you that can decide when your season comes to an end and it's just indicative of how much harder it is to win during the playoffs because there is that added level of pressure for these kids and you know they're 16 17 18 years old it's hard to rise to those types of moments at that age but you know credit sacred heart cathedral they clearly have and they get a chance to play in the championship friday and what it says on here will be 8 30 at santa clara university it's past my bedtime <laughs> Well, as we get the first half stats here, I think we should go over these. Two interesting things to note. Bellarmine, two from set, two for seven from the three-point line. Reardon, three for 11. So two teams who have found a little success from distance. On the other side, Reardon shooting nine for 21. The Bells, 12 for 22. So Bellarmine shooting 54, Reardon shooting 42%. And I think that's what we expected so far. It looked like the Crusaders were missing a couple shots that they usually hit down the stretch is that the difference in this game Spencer is there more to it I, I think it's really been the defensive adjustment against Bryce Monroe for Bellarmine but I think that's been a part of it but more important it's been their offense because they went through a stretch where they were looking like they were just not able to score they weren't even getting any jump shots off I mean most of their points have come in the paint but th they've been using a lot of the shot clock because they're not able to find any kind of early rhythm. They're having trouble getting one-on-one -on -one penetration. They're having to move the ball a lot just to find any kind of opening. But we've seen two or three scramble plays now result in Bellarmine points. You, you know, four to six of their 26 points have been off of 25 seconds of good defense from Reardon, and then five seconds of really just a moment of a breakdown, a scramble, and then Bellarmine has been Johnny on the spot, mostly Quinn Denker, finding the ball, collecting it, and scoring at the very last moment. I mean, I mean, that's why Bellarmine has got the lead right now. That has been the difference in this game because it, Bellarmine has not gotten, like you said, just two of seven from beyond the arc. One of them from Sasso late in the quarter. He's a guy who we've seen before. He can really get it going, and he has got a great confidence stroke. But this is a team that's been scoring inside and really not having any success on the perimeter. Even their jumpers are really bunnies in the lane. They're, they're a step or two inside the free throw line. So Reardon right now is keeping Bellarmine off the perimeter, but has not been able to lock down the paint. I've mentioned that their backside rotations have been a little iffy at times. I think you just have guys wanting to go for steals all too often, and that that's creating these openings and these kind of scramble plays where, yeah, he got a hand on the ball here and he almost created a turnover, but two guys started charging for the ball and now they're out of position. There's an open man or an open spot on the floor. So, you know, I, I'm going to be watching Reardon's defense really closely to see what kind of changes they make against this Bellarmine offense. Yeah, one other thing to note, Bellarmine, 14 points in the paint. The last time they played this Reardon team, they were outscored in the paint 28 to 14. Now they're on top here in the second half, 14 to 6. The Bells have been doing it in the paint and with everybody. Bellarmine, eight guys on the scoreboard. Reardon, only four. So we'll see if Reardon tries to get more guys involved or continue to go to Bryce Monroe, who's been money, honestly, so far tonight. Oh, 13 yeah. points, uh, only one personal foul, an assist, and no rebounds. Johnny Clark, the other scorer, five points, three rebounds, and two assists. Kind of more of a do-it-all guy. But we'll see if for the Crusaders if the offense gets narrower than it already is or if they spread it out and try to get guys like Henderson and Quantico on the scoreboard. And I mean, yeah, you don't always want to be relying on just one guy, but I, I kind of think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Bryce Monroe ha has been money. He missed his last two shots and had a turnover, and he's still 5-9 with 13 points, which is a game high. And they, they haven't had any type of consistent answer. What the, the one time they did, he worked off that screen in that little three-man motion action that turns into a pick and roll. And what the, the weak side defender did, or a defender that got screened, is he came back into the play and got Monroe. But Monroe later made the adjustment and just decided to go all the way to the basket. I mean, he's shown the ability to contort his body in the air and stay in control and use both hands at the rim. He showed us the three ball, the mid-range jumper. I mean, he really does have 
a complete offensive repertoire. And I, I think that's where your focus has to be if you're Reardon. He's made some nice passes as well. So I think the offense has got to go through him. But his star backcourt make Jelani Clark just three field goal attempts in that first half. I mean, that's not usually what this Reardon team is. It's usually, you know, Monroe one and Clark two or vice versa. But it's really just been Monroe, Monroe one and Monroe one A as well for the Crusaders. So. We'll see if their offensive approach changes in the second half or if they keep rolling with Bryce Monroe or if they try to get Jelani Clark a little bit more involved. Jelani Clark was at that game at Bellarmine. Jelani Clark only had five points for the first two and a half quarters and then went for 14 in the third. So a guy who can get hot quick and put a lot of points on the board in a moment's notice. So I think that's one thing to point out. We'll see if Jelani starts to take control and put more points on the board. One minute to go here until this second half. What are the quick adjustments for both teams for the final 16? I, I think Reardon offensively has got to stop turning the ball over. I mean, we've just seen that too many times there down the stretch where it's not that they're not shooting the ball well, they're not shooting it amazing, just 43%, but that was after kind of a cold start, and they've, they've gotten it going since, but they've been unable to get out of their own way with several turnovers there. They had two turnovers, like both of them coming down the stretch, and so they, they really just have not been in the same rhythm that they were kind of in the middle part of that first half, and for Bellarmine, I, I, I think you just got to keep rolling. You know, how are they going to be able to keep getting the ball inside and having such a high level of success when, as you mentioned, th they didn't last time out. They were outscored 28 to 14 in the paint, but tonight they've got the edge. So how is Bellerman able to keep that advantage and make the adjustments to the adjustments that Reardon's going to make to try to stop it? So as both teams come out, it is Bellerman will go right to left as we switch hoops here. The starters for both teams as we begin the second half of CCS no, semifinal action at Independence High School. Out where the timeline comes, Danker, Ruth far wing. Ruth drip, crosses over with the right hand, looks for someone to go and finds Cruz. Cruz looking for the skip pass. Now we'll go off a screen from Elam and find Sasso. Sasso down low to Elam, far block extended. Elam with 17 to shoot, driving into Johnson. Skip pass to Danker, Ubaje all over it. Danker, left wing, dribbles with the right hand. Now will attack to Sasso. Sasso pops from 15, off glass and down. Gio Sasso might have not called bank, Gio but he Sasso. got the bucket. And it's 28-24. Bellerman matches their largest lead of the night. Counts all the same. I, I mean, you know, Gio Sasso definitely did not mean to bank that one, but it counts all the same. Turner, three ball, left corner, off the backboard and over the rim. Jelani Clark wanted it the whole way through the pass and put the three in the air, but unable to get one from downtown as Reardon's shooting woes continue. And you like to see a star player like Jelani Clark, you know, kind of spreading the love, finding his teammates, getting them involved, but it, this is win or go home. He's got to take over. Danker down the left alley, layup over Ubaje, short, rebound taken by Johnson, who will be fouled. That will be on Quinn Danker, his second or his first so far tonight, as it will be Reardon basketball moving left to right. 6.58 to play here in the third quarter. Ruth will be called for the foul correction. 28-24, Bellerman on top. And that's not the first time tonight we've seen tough physical rebounds from Deshaun Johnson, snatched it from the middle of three Bellerman players and, and eventually drew the foul. Those are big possessions to gain. Here is Turner, right wing, now will drive over against Elam from the left block, air balls the layup, and Cruz falls down with a rebound. Reardon looks a little flat-footed coming out of the second half. And they're not getting Monroe or Clark involved significantly offensively. I, I think that's got to be where you go. Here's Cruz, over to Danker into the corner. Pump fakes, gets Jelani jumping, takes a jumper off from 18, left it short. Rebound, though, by Elam, but... He could not finish on the left block as Ruth. Here come the Crusaders. Here is Clark. Just got put in the popcorn machine working against Cruz. Now goes left wing over to Monroe. Monroe, left hand dribble, Ruth all over it. Now Monroe will find Clark right wing. Clark, right hand dribble, down the lane, up with the right hand, gets fouled, and will walk to the line. And if you're Jelani Clark struggling offensively, the way to do it is from the free throw line. Yeah, absolutely. You love to see him not settling for deep threes. Not that he's not capable of knocking him down. He absolutely is. But 
with Bellerman moving to kind of a 2-3 sort of matchup zone there. And a lot of times teams will get lazy and settle for jumpers. But Jelani Clark smartly attacking, splitting a double team and getting himself to the free throw line with a chance for some early points in the second half. Henderson will check in for Turner. With a coast-to-coast -coast footprint of over 300 U.S.-based production sites, you can see why Vulcan Materials is, is an essential part of our country's makeover. Visit them at VulcanMaterials.com. So Clark goes one for two at the line, and it's a 25-28 lead for the Bells. Chance to make it their largest lead of the night with a bucket on this trip. Here is Elam. Elam to Sasso up top. 19 to shoot for the Bells, up by three. Here with 5.45 to play in the third quarter. Sasso nowhere to go against Clark, gives it over to Ruth, into the corner, Danker a three, left it short, and Monroe will come down with a rebound. Monroe looking to push, going left to right, right into Danker, layup on the left block, puts it home. Bryce Monroe going coast to coast, and it's a one point lead for the Bells. It, and that's what it has to be for Reardon. It's gotta be Monroe and Clark just taking over. No one else has been able to get it going offensively. Sasso, left wing, finds Danker. Danker. Will try from 18 straight on another short shot for Quinn Danker, but Ruth will come down for the rebound, and he is fouled by Ubaje. And right now, Bellerman doing a great job on the offensive glass, getting a couple fortunate bounces, but they're just the first ones to the loose ball on these long rebounds. So credit them offensively for battling down low in the paint and just being scrappy. 5-12 to play here in the third. Bellerman by one. Danker thought about a three left wing. Now will drive across the lane. Finds Cruz. He'll try from the left side. Short, but Elam another offensive rebound. And he is fouled in the Bells without their 6-7 sophomore Ryan Kiachin, but dominating the glass so far. Yeah, right now they're just getting better position. Elam once again was able to get the inside leverage on Johnson and, and just boxed him out. I mean, it was an offensive box out there by Ian Elam. He's able to snatch that rebound and draw the foul. So right now, Reardon defensively has got to be more sound on their box outs and more aggressive crashing the boards. Ian Elam knocks down the first free throw. He had a point in six rebounds against Reardon in, their last, in the last time these, te these two teams faced off. 29, 27, Bellerman by one, by two, make it three after that free throw. And the Bells lead by three. Here come the Crusaders going left to right. It has been the Clark and Monroe show so far. Let's see if they continue to be the offense. Up top, it's Clark. Looking for a screen coming from Wilson. Gives it back to Monroe, left wing. Monroe drives, floater from 15, and he puts it home. Bryce Monroe, just a scoring machine, has 17 so far. And they can't stop him. Keep going to him. Here's Danker going down the left alley, and a foul will come on Jelani Clark. And Clark asking for the foul after the play. Did not want his teammate, <laughs> Chime Ubaje, to pick up his third. And, and he knew that the foul was on him, but helping off of his man from the corner, that's not what you're supposed to do. Cruz, three, left wing, and one! Kieran Cruz off the inbound, puts home the triple, and draws the foul, and it's 33-29. Bells match their largest lead at four with 4.32 to play here in the third. Well, it is plays like that that make the WCAL the most successful league in the California Interscholastic Federation history with more state titles than any league in the state. The WCAL is composed of member schools that share a commitment to interscholastic sports, superior academic standards, and shared faith. The member schools of the West Catholic Athletic League are happy to partner with Central Coast Sports Broadcasting, providing listeners with the best interscholastic basketball each week of the season. So Cruz will complete the four-point play. He's you got don't 10 see that so a lot. far. You do not see that a lot in high school, the four-point play. Three. Jamal Crawford would be proud. <laughs> the Bells with their largest lead so far at five. Monroe looking to answer. Too strong off the back iron. He's, he stepped into that one, but a long rebound goes out to Abanje. Turner down low. They find Henderson. Took the cutting Turner air ball. Rebound there by Henderson. Or correction, Wilson, and he will get fouled going up for two. It's kind of a hectic play there. For it, it, it was. It was a great find by Wilson to find Those Turner cutting on the backside. Reardon doing a good job moving the ball against the zone, cutting to the open areas as the defense rotates. But Turner got fouled first. Wilson is shooting these free throws, and justfully so for, for Reardon because Turner got fouled when he shot that layup, clearly. I don't know how the official missed the call, but Reardon nonetheless gets a chance at the line. 
First one missed by Wilson. 4.15 to play here in the third. As he knocks home the second one. 34 to 30, Bellarmine up by four as they'll bring it right to left. Reardon trying to get back in this one as they go full court pressure. Here's Denker across the far sideline. Double coming from Monroe as he find, tries to find Trotson in the corner. And Bryce Monroe hyped up about that possession for his team as they will bring it, chance to make it a one possession game on this trip down. And he should be. He and Chimay Ubaja did a great job pressuring Denker, forcing the turnover right there. That's exactly why you go to that press and in that kind of situation. Here's up top Monroe, left hand dribble. Now we'll drive against Cruz, gets a step, gets to the rim, and finishes from the right side. Bryce Monroe's got 19 of the 32 for Reardon, and it is a 32-34 lead for the Bells. Here's Danker, finds Ruth, looking for somewhere to go. Gives it, now we'll bounce it on the ground. He gets fouled. I thought Ridley Ruth had already picked up the dribble. He was double teamed on the far wing. And instead bailed out there by the foul. And the foul goes on Monroe. That's going to be his second. But they bailed out. They definitely bailed out Ruth over in that corner. He was trapped. He picked up his dribble. He did not have anywhere to go. It looked like he was about to travel. But Monroe just got the hand in there and hit the arm. Here's Danker, left wing, right hand dribble. Now works off a screen from Cruz. Gives it into Sasso. Sasso, pump fakes, drives, hands off Ruth. Far wing for Ridley Ruth will go down low to Cruz, far block. Cruz against the smaller Ubaje, fall away jumper from 10, Ooh. buries it. Ooh. Here in Cruz with a pretty move, and it's a 36-32 lead here with 3.15 to go in the third. Hey, Carmelo Anthony would, would be proud. Here is a three coming from Turner in the corner, and he buries that one. This time it falls for Justice Turner, his first bucket of the night, and it's a one-point lead for the Bells. Big shot right there from number five. Denker being wrapped up with Ubaje and a jump ball will be called and that's going to be reared in basketball. And so Chime Ubaje playing the defense against Quinn Danker who I've noticed Spencer likes when he brings it off that press to just go one on one all the way down. Might be easier if he moves the basketball. Yeah it really would be but credit Ubaje right there just doing a great job hounding Danker at the defensive end and, and, and forcing the, the turnover there with the possession arrow but Ever, ever since Reardon started coming out with that press, Bellerman hasn't been the same offensively. They're, they're hurrying to get it across, and then they're still in a hurry by the time they get down here. That's probably why Bellerman has called this timeout because their coach is probably telling them, hey, we've got to slow down against the press. Y you can get across quickly, but once you get there, find an outlet, slow down, get into the offense, and don't be in such a hurry all the time. Outfitters of Nike, Under Armour, and other national brands, there is only one team with the best supply network in high school athletics. BSN Sports, give John Gillette a call today at 408-209-6433 or check out their website at bsnsports.com. And entering our 10th year with the most live coverage of high school sports in the area, we are Central Coast Sports Broadcasting. Big shout out to our broadcasters and sponsors who continue to get back to our community with the best in high school athletics. For the latest updates and scheduling, check out our website at centralcoastsports.live. You can also follow us on Facebook at Central Coast Sports Broadcasting. Well, three minutes to play here in the third quarter. It seemed like Reardon started off a little flat-footed, but they've come back here, able to trim the Bellerman five-point lead down to one, and now a chance to take the lead on this trip. Spencer, what is what flip-switched? here for the Crusaders. It, it, it was at the defensive end. I mean, they just have more intensity. They forced a couple turnovers. Bryce Monroe has been into it. And I, I think offensively, you know, Monroe has obviously been carrying the load, but I think the energy has really started at the defensive end and that's carried over into offense for Reardon. Monroe crosses the timeline, finds Clark left wing. Clark will take a screen for Monroe and move it in between the rings. Back to Monroe left wing. So let's go Reardon chance come from the Reardon student section who's traveled a long way here to Independence trying to get the help their team out. Here's Ubaje driving baseline left hand dribble. Now we'll give it up top to Monroe. Monroe crosses over, works in against Ruth, dances into the lane, layup high off glass, too strong, rebound Wilson's there. He goes up and gets blocked. Turner is stripped on the rebound, ball on the deck. Cruz dives for it, but it's right to Ubaje. Ubaje. Up top to Clark, pump fakes, goes around Danker, down the right alley, layup over Sasso, and the foul. Jelani Clark had yet to score a field goal in this third quarter, but what a big one, that one right there, an and one 
from the straight on, and now a chance to increase the one-point lead for Reardon. I, uh, what an incredible finish from Jelani Clark. Not the first one that we've seen tonight from the junior. I mean, he's just hanging in the air and, and throwing the ball up. But what he does is when he's shooting these little floaters and bunnies, he's getting a ton of spin on the ball. That's helping it land softly on the rim, kind of crawl around and find its way to the bottom of the net. He, he's had a couple near impossible finishes tonight. As Grassman and Wolfbloom check in and he completes the end one play, does Jelani. 38 to 36, Reardon back on top on a 7-0 run. Wolfbloom gives it over to Cruz. Cruz looking to find somewhere to go. Bells might have to call time and a foul is gonna come on Ubaje as they doubled Cruz on the far side. I don't know about that one. I, I don't know about that one, Carlo. It looked like Ubaje had a lot of ball. He, he had a lot of ball on that one. Bellerman, again, not doing well against the pressure. They are fortunate that that was not another jump ball. Oh, the Bells have been struggling with this weird impress as Grassman will drive against Ubaje. Layup off glass, nothing there, and a rebound. Here come the Crusaders up by two, looking to add more. Here's Ubaje driving down the alley. Bounce pass inside to Wilson. Ball on the deck. Wolfbloom saves it, throws it right through Sasso's legs, trying to... Stop it from going out of bounds, and it will be Crusader basketball near side with a fresh 35. And, and you, you bodge a fortunate that Reardon still has the ball because he forced that ball down to Dominic Wilson. That, that pass was not there, and he's got to be smarter in that situation. Here's Monroe up top, going right by Ruth. Layup inside, nothing there as a rebound. As Ruth came, went out of bounds contesting, then comes back inside trying to go for the rebound and was out of bounds when he touched the basketball. The Reardon bench is begging for foul calls in each possession, and, and I have to say they have a very strong case. I mean, Monroe charged down the lane as we're gonna get a timeout right here. Timeout Monroe charged seconds. down that lane. What he did was really smart. He came into the backcord for the side out of bounds, created space between him and his defender, and then gave himself a running start. That makes it almost impossible to stay in front of a guy as quick and as explosive as Bryce Monroe. But he charged down that lane. He tried to split a double team, but it looked like he definitely got fouled. I mean, both guys kind of pinched together on him as he shot the layup and missed. And you know, Reardon maintains possession, but yeah, those are the, the types of things, especially in a close game, they can be really hard for players to overcome because it is frustrating to go into the lane, to do all the work uh, of getting by your defender, make a move, go up, know you got fouled, and that you had almost no chance to make the layup anyway, and then to not get the call. It can be deflating, but it can also be infuriating and be used as a point of energy for a guy like Bryce Monroe and you know, we'll see how, how he responds here, but that's a couple times now that he's wanted an and one call and hasn't gotten it. So 150 to play here in the third, 38 to 36. Reardon on top, looking to add more. Here's a pass inside to Clark. He is doubled and is gonna pull it out. He was at the right block and just drove all the way up top to the circle. He'll hand off to Monroe, who's one-on-one -on -one with Ruth. And let's see if they continue to go to a thousand point score. Monroe up top to Clark, also scored 1,000 points, tries a deep three off the side of the iron, and Grassman comes down with the rebound. He'll bring it up against Ubaje. Grassman, left-hand dribble, gives it over to Cruz, left wing. Cruz goes off a screen from Ojike, tries a three straight on, air ball, and a rebound will come from Monroe. Monroe gets Grassman in the spin cycle, up at the right block, and puts it home. Bryce Monroe's got 21, and we're got a minute to play here in the third quarter. He's got bounce. He has got absolute bunnies. As Ubaje almost takes it from Grassman, but it goes out of bounds to the Bells. Danker and Elam will check in. Back to Monroe for a second. That was a tremendously difficult finish, but the reason he's able to contort his body like this and have the hang time that he does, or, or the reason he's able to do this is because he has the hang time that he does. He's in the air for so long, and he has tremendous body control mid-air to be able to finish all these shots. It is really impressive and fun to watch. Wolfloom rips through against Clark, attacks left-hand layup, too strong, rebound. Ruth comes up with it and finishes, and the foul. Josh Wolfloon took a big spill, but Ridley Ruth able to recover and will walk to the line. Wolfloon holding his face. But a big time play there from Ruth as it looked like Reardon was trying to create some momentum thanks to Bryce Monroe. Yeah, it was, but that's a big bucket there for Bellerman, but it's really been one of the staples of their offense tonight. 
a hectic sequence. Not a great shot, but someone is in the right place at the right time. This time it was Ridley Ruth who charges to the basket for two points and the foul. As Henderson picks up his, or er, Johnson picked up his third foul, Ruth completes the end one. So up comes Monroe, 40 to 39. Bryce Monroe, 21 points here in the game as we have 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. His team up one. Monroe, right hand dribble, goes off a screen from Wilson. Now has got the switch on Elam. Goes right by him, pulls from 15, in and out, and off the backboard and down. Bryce Monroe with another bucket, and here come the Bells. He's just got too much speed. No one on Bellarmine can stay in front of him, and his touch in the lane and his ability to pull up at any moment is impeccable. You wonder if Coach Schneider will just start denying him the ball. Here is Wolfloom, gives it over to Elam, and a foul is going to be called. And this one. Uh, it's going to be one and one. So Bellarmine will have one and one for the whole That's not fourth a foul. quarter. That's not a foul. I, th th there, there's just not enough contact there, especially in a game like this, to, to call that foul. And that is three on Ubaja. So Bloom will shoot the one and one chance to make it a one point game. As he knocks down the first one, 40 to 42, the lead for Reardon. Josh Wolfloom had a deuce earlier in the game, but Bellerman has been bailed out a couple times here by the foul calls as Wolfloom can't hit the second one, and it's a two-point lead for the Bells. Clark will push 10 to play here in the third quarter. Here's Monroe, left-hand dribble working against Ruth. He's doubled there by Elam. Elam gets the ball. Elam, does he see the clock? He does, fires from 10 and in and out it goes, but that is the end of the third quarter and it is a 42 to 40 game. And there's, on the, top. there's the adjustment by Bellarmine. They just doubled him. They, they just sent Elam away from his man. Everyone kind of rotated to, to prevent a, a severe opening or a lapse defensively. And they, they just sent two guys to Bryce Monroe. And that leads us to our Green Waffle in-game summary. You need a snack or a quick, healthy protein fix. All natural, nine grams of power pack protein. The Green Waffle for a complete list of locations and more info on this dynamic product. Go to their website, thegreenwaffle.com. Eat clean, go green. A, a, that is the summary of the game, is how do you stop Bryce Monroe? And apparently for Bellerman, that is now double team. J just openly send the double team. And if your defense can rotate fast enough I, I, I don't hate the strategy because you're going to force Monroe to give up the ball. He turned it over right there because he wasn't expecting it. But you're going to force Monroe to give up the ball, and then you're you're making Reardon make the extra pass. They have to be on time and on target. Then you have to knock down the shot all before Bellerman can rotate back. So I don't think it's the worst strategy here for, for Bellerman to keep double-teaming him because he has been their most consistent source of offense every single quarter. The question is though, if we see a Monroe Clark pick and roll, does Bellarmine still double? Cause you got two first team all WCL sophomores, two a thousand point scores in their junior years. You can't really double if you're gonna leave number zero wide open, he'll make you pay. Well, you rotate from the back side and make someone else beat you. Other Reardon guys have struggled from the floor tonight. So, so make you Baja or Turner beat you. Cruz three straight on, rolls around and out. Wolf Bloom fights for the rebound and it's gonna be Reardon basketball. And great hustle there by Wolf Bloom, but Jelani Clark is just as if not more athletic, able to contest going way up for that rebound. And th that's something that Bellerman has, has done very well tonight is crash the offensive glass. Here's Monroe, right wing, left hand dribble. 23 points so far tonight. Working against Ruth, picks up the dribble, goes down low to Turner. Turner finds Ubanche right wing. 17 to shoot here for the Crusaders. Monroe will take it in between the rings, now drifts left side. Monroe with the right hand dribble at the waist. Switches over to the left, is double teamed there. Goes down low to Turner. Turner will turn, fire at the left block, and puts it home off glass. Bryce Monroe finding the right guy off the double team, and it's a 44-40 lead, seven minutes to go here in the fourth. And it's an excellent find by the junior Monroe and an even better finish by Turner down low. But I think if you're Bellman, you're gonna live with that move over Bryce Monroe. And Wolf Bloom going back door to Danker. Quinn Danker with his sixth Quinn point Danker. of the night. And it's a two point lead for the Crusaders who are moving the ball left to right. And Bryce Monroe hasn't worked off the ball 
Tonight, he's done everything as the primary ball handler. Let's see if they get him some off-ball screens. Monroe, right wing, rips through and goes baseline against Ruth. Spins back middle, shovels inside to Wilson, and a beautiful find for Dominic Wilson, who gets two. Wilson has five, and it's 46-42. Reardon on top, 628 to play. And, and you said it, beautiful feed from Bryce Monroe, recognizing the defense is focusing on him entirely and finding the open man. Danker, three, left wing, off the front of the rim. Monroe hauls down the rebound. Monroe works against Ruth, and Ruth fouls him in transition. As it, with 612 to play, Reardon will take it out of bounds, up by four. Crusaders, they draw two more fouls. They will in, be in one and one bonus the rest of the night. Bellerman already in the one and one, as Clark will bring it across the timeline. Bellerman 0 for 2 from distance downtown. The Crusaders have been done it with paint buckets. Here is a pass by Monroe taken away by Wolfbloom. He finds transition. Elam layup on the right block and Ian Elam with another bucket as it is 46-44 just under six to play. And Bryce Monroe there having his pass deflect on the double team. Clark needs to find a way to get himself some buckets here down the stretch. Reardon is going to need it offensively. Clark up top with the ball comes off a screen and finds Turner on the left wing. Turner will drive into Elam, finds Ubaje near side. Ubaje, left hand dribble, 10 to shoot here for the Crusaders. Up top, it's a three coming from Clark. Short on the rebound, and Wolfloom is there. The sophomore pull up from CCS was on that JV team for Bellarmine that went 23 0 on the year. Has played big minutes so far here for the Bells. Asked to guard Jelani Clark. Here's Cruz driving baseline, spins, left hand layup, gets fouled, and Kieran Cruz has a chance to tie this one up with 5.08 to play. And Cruz getting bailed out right there with the foul call because he spun in the lane. He kind of determined the move he was going to do without reading the defense. It wasn't there. He was in the face of two or three reared in defenders, but the foul is going to come on, on Dominic Wilson, and that is a foul that definitely bails out Bellerman and once again gives him an opportunity at the free throw line when things look dire. Cruz able to bury the first free throw, give him 14 on the night, the leading score for the Bells, and it will be a timeout here for Reardon. Published quarterly for 30 years, don't miss the combination of business and lifestyle articles that affect the agricultural industry. Pick up a copy of Coastal Grower Magazine today or subscribe via coastalgrowermag.com. Well, 5.08 to play here in the fourth as we get set for the final sem minutes of the semifinal matchup. Authentic quality dishes with local ingredients that uniquely seasons crust and prepared fresh daily. Pomodoro Pizza in the Almaden Valley, a great place for great food on game night or any day of the week. Find them at 6932 Almaden Expressway, San Jose, or click the website, Pomodoro Pizza Almaden, to place your order. So a one-point game here, Spencer. It has been neck and neck. What does either team have to do to create some distance down the stretch? Well, I think the key for Bellerman is to continue out scrapping Reardon. That, that's how they've stayed in this game. Offensive rebounds, being at the right place, putbacks, fouls, causing turnovers at the defensive end. That's how they're in this game because it, that's how they've generated most of their points. And for Reardon, they've got to find a way to either get Bryce Monroe the ball in space in one-on-one -on -one situations or allow, allow him opportunities to get inside and dish out passes to his teammates, which he's proved prolific at doing. But right now, all of Bellerman's defensive attention is on Bryce Monroe. So I, I think you have to use him as a decoy. And Jelani Clark has got to get going, whether it's from beyond the arc or inside, I think he's going to be the key for Reardon down the stretch. Cruz ties us up at 46. And so with 5.08 to play, it is pretty much 0-0 as Bryce Monroe will bring it left to right. Monroe, 23 points, 10 of those coming in the third quarter. As they get the call from Joe Curtin and Reardon will run the play. 2-3 zone here for the Bells. As here's a drive coming from Clark inside Turner on the far corner. Turner being poked away by Wolfloom. Wolfloom ball on the deck, puts it up to Ruth, who scoops it to Cruz. Cruz layup, a left side, rolls around off the front of the rim. Bellerman wanted a foul, no call there, and Monroe will move it the other way. Monroe attacks, Euros around Wolfloom, blocked away by Elam, and here comes Danker one on one with Ubaje. Danker scoops to Cruz, left corner three. Kieran Cruz couldn't connect. Elam the rebound, and the putback falls home. Ian Elam 
with the big time bucket and what a sequence there, Spencer. Yeah, it is, but Clark and Turner for Reardon just standing and watching. They're not crashing, no other bigs on the court were there to get that rebound for Reardon and that was just too easy for Ian Elam. Here is Turner right wing. Halfway through the fourth quarter, Bellarmine up two as Josh Wolfblum will pick up a foul. Wolfblum had the steal to start the sequence earlier. And so Jelani Clark will take a near side out of, out of bounds. Reardon down by two, 48 to 46, 405 to play here in the fourth. Taking it up will be Monroe as he crosses the timeline. Bell's back in this high 2 3 zone. Here is a skip pass to Obaje. Obaje, left wing, left hand dribble finds Clark into the corner. Monroe, Monroe, deep three off the back of the iron. Rebound, Wolfloom comes down with it, and the Bells will bring it up. And just out fighting Wilson there was Wolfbloom for that rebound. And those are the types of hustle plays that have been advantage Bellerman all night long. Here's Danker, drives by Monroe, layup on the right block, puts it home, and timeout Joe Curtin. And Bryce Monroe at the other end, it wasn't necessarily a bad look, but you can tell he let that fly because it was the most space that he's had in the last several minutes. Credit Coach Schneider and Bellerman and their ability to make adjustments on Bryce Monroe because he's been held in check really since about the halfway point of the third quarter. We just haven't heard that much from him. So Danker gets the layup to go in transition. So Joe Curtin will call time. You mentioned one thing, Spencer. Bellerman goes to the 2-3. You no longer really have the one-on-one -on -one advantage you had with Monroe. Most of his buckets, he would bring it up top, go one-on-one -on -one and get to the rim. Now when you go 2-3, the offense gets a lot more stagnant. You get reared in guys watching a lot. And a good adjustment there from Coach Schneider here late in the fourth. Yeah, absolutely. A zone defense forces a team to play complete team offense. The way you beat a zone is either running a high low or overloading a side to just have more offensive players than defenders in the area and whip the ball around. But that hasn't been how Reardon has been getting their points tonight. It's been some transition buckets, but mostly the one-on-one -on -one phenomenal play of Bryce Monroe. But against a zone, that's just not how you're going to beat it. I mean, there, there are sometimes windows to kind of drive, get to a point, have the defense collapse and kick out, but that's not resulting in a Bryce Monroe shot. And he's been operating with the ball. That last missed three, he was having a catch and shoot on the wing here right in front of us. So I, I, I think all the credit in the world to, to Coach Schneider for shutting him down, but Reardon right now has got to make the adjustment. And defensively, they just look too flat and lethargic. So Bellerman goes man, or they'll stay in the 2-3. Now it's back to a man out of the timeout. Here, Obaje left corner. Reardon down by 4, 3.20 to play, looking to trim the lead. Here's a layup by Obaje in the lane, and he puts it home. Just a 10-foot jumper. Jime Obaje only listed at 5'9", but able to have a huge vertical jump to get to. Yeah, it looked like he was up to about 7 feet in the air with his head on that jumper and a smooth stroke. Cruz driving down the right alley by Wilson, blocked out of bounds. Dominic Wilson shuts the door on Kieran Cruz, and it will be underneath basketball for the Bells. 3-0-1 to play, up by two. And that's the first sign of defensive energy and life we've seen from Reardon here in the fourth quarter. Here's the inbound coming from the Bells. Elam has it right wing. Elam gives it over to Tanker. Just under three minutes to play, two-point lead for the Bells here in the CCS semifinal. Danker dribbling, spins in the lane, trying to go to Elam, taken away there by Wilson. Wilson in transition, holds it above his head and finds Clark. Clark in the left corner, crossover on Cruz. Pump face, gets him jumping. Floater from 10 around the rim and down. Jelani Clark with his first point of the fourth quarter and we're knotted up at 50, 2.30 to play. And once again, that backspin he puts on the ball, he puts on so much, that's why he's got soft touch. Danker, driving baseline, looking for somewhere to go, gives it up top to Elam. Elam. Dribbles with the left hand, hands off to Danker. Danker drives in the paint, layup from a 10. And Jelani Clark right there, Spencer, just watched Danker drive in and did not give any help defense. Yeah, you're exactly right. I was going to say, if you didn't, he just watched Danker come at him with the floater, didn't go to contest at all, maybe didn't want to foul, but you, you can't allow easy buckets like that in this situation. Monroe bounces it down low to Wilson. Right block, layup goes home. Dominic Wilson, big minutes off the bench here for the Crusaders. Ties us back up at 52, 149 to play. And it was a risky pass by Monroe, but a skilled one. Here's a steal by Clark in transition. Nobody in front of him. Jelani Clark is fouled. 
or blocked away by Danker. Originally, I thought it was a foul, but Quinn Danker came from behind and blocked it out of bounds. What a defensive play from number three. I'm not going to comment directly. Joe Curtin, head coach of Reardon, is, was pretty upset that there was no foul call there. We, we don't have a great angle from where Clark was going because his back was kind of covering us, but it, it was certainly a great hustle play to block the shot, but I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to comment on, on that one. I'm usually not shy about saying what I think about a call, but that one I, I, I think was a little bit close, and, you know, I... It's tough. It, 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 uh, officiating's a tough job, straight up. On your ride home, tune in to the Central Coast Sports post-game show. Stats, insight, interviews, and more. Make sure that you listen to the Central Coast Sports player of the game, all part of the Central Coast Sports post-game show. Keep us here on your ride home. Carlo and myself will have that for you right here on YouTube Live. So 141 to play, 52 all were tied, as it will be underneath out of bounds here for the Crusaders. Joe Curtin had the opportunity to draw up a, a play, used his second to last timeout, still has one more. Coach Schneider with three of his own with 141 to play as Monroe will take it out of bounds. Gives it to Clark, right wing. Clark being watched there by Danker, finds Monroe, left side almost stolen there by Ruth. Monroe in between the rings with a right hand dribble. 130 to play, tied at 52. Monroe has it now, heels on the logo. He'll go one on one with Ruth. Ridley Ruth. Well, he's been asked to play big minutes here in CCS as Monroe goes right by him. Left hand layup, in and out, rebound. Turner goes up. He is fouled. But just as Turner got inside a position, the first putback wasn't there. The second one draws whistle. And now big free throws coming for number five, who has yet to shoot free throws so far tonight. Bryce Monroe knows that he missed a great opportunity there as he got right to the rim, as we've seen him do so often. But... I, I don't know what Bellerman is doing. Their defensive strategy of doubling him on all screens or any situation has, has taken Monroe out of the game from an individual offensive perspective. And then all of a sudden, they leave Ridley Ruth isolated. And Monroe, as he's done all night in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, blows by him. Now, Bellerman is fortunate that he missed the layup. It's not a shot. We're going to see Bryce Monroe miss a lot, but reared and hustling on the offensive glass. Turner hits both. And with 1.15 to play, it's a 54-52 lead for Reardon. Tanker will cross the timeline, right-hand dribble. Watch by, by Ubaje. Pump fakes and now gives it to Elam, right wing. Elam straight on to Wolfbloom, left wing, Danker. Danker goes down low to Elam. Turnaround layup from the left block is down for Ian Elam. Six in the corner for the birthday boy. And with just under a minute to play, we're tied at 54. And a great play call there by head coach Patrick Schneider. It's the same play they ran or the same set they ran on the first possession of the game. Elam missed it then, but did not miss his opportunity right there, and he was much more open this time. Monroe up top, one-on-one -on -one with Ruth. Elam will come to double, now switched on him. A 10 to shoot here for number one. The 1,000-point scorer finds Ubaje. Back to Monroe, thought about a three. Now we'll try one, right wing, buries it. Bryce Monroe with a big-time shot, and it's a long two they're going to call it. So Monroe with the toe on the line, and the Bells will call time. They'll get the last possession here with 20.6, but what a shot from Bryce Monroe. The elevation on that jumper, my goodness. I, I mean, he is getting way up in the air. You, you have to credit the time he has clearly put in the weight room in, in his entire career because that takes a tremendous amount of gifted athleticism, but also of time spent in the weight room, working on your legs, and being able to have that elevation and still shoot with consistency with, with that type of, of jumping ability. That is not hard to do. I, I mean, that, oh, but that was a ridiculously tough shot. It was contested as well. So foot on the line for Monroe. So we get a long two instead of a three. That's big for the Bells. And what a shot, you mentioned it. Bryce Monroe, I thought he was gonna fire the deep one, but instead decided to drive and shoot from the right elbow. Spencer Bellerman right now, you got five guys who you could go to. Who are you drawing up this play for with 20.6? It's tough. Because th th their best offense tonight has been team basketball. 
So I'm coming up with a team-oriented set that doesn't that has multiple options. You know, not they're not a one-on-one -on -one type of team like Reardon is with Bryce Monroe and Jelani Clark. And they, they don't have really a go-to guy right now. Denker has been cold. He's the best at getting his own shot, but his jumper's been cold in the second half. His legs have looked a little bit tired, but Bellerman fortunate that that was not a three by Bryce Monroe because they have not shot the ball well from beyond the arc tonight. Denker almost falls inbounds, trying to give it to Sasso, and Turner slaps it out of bounds as whatever Coach Schneider drew up in the timeout just ends up not happening. So here comes Danker as across the timeline. 18 to play. Bellerman down by two. Sasso right wing. Dribbles across the timeline. Finds Danker on the left wing. Danker dribbles. Finds Cruz. Down low. Wide open. Elam layup left block. Puts it home. Ian Elam with the bucket. And it'll be a timeout for Coach Joe Curtin with 4.1 to play. And once again a defensive breakdown from Reardon just allowing Elam to slip through on that screen. The backside rotation was late, but it's exactly what I called for was just a team set. There were a number of different options in that play. It's just kind of their basic motion where Denker drags across at the free throw line across two screens, and then those bigs from there set off a combination of off and on ball screens to open themselves and their teammates up. Elam once again with a big shot, and now 4.1 seconds. Three guesses as to where this ball is going for Reardon. My money is on number one, Bryce Monroe, who has obviously shown up tonight, but what tremendous execution on that previous play by Bellerman because in a situation like that, it's a lot easier to just get the ball to one guy and let him go to work. But knowing you're down two in this type of environment, the semifinal, a championship bid on the line, executing your most basic fundamental motion offense can sometimes be very difficult and credit the entire Bellman team that was on the floor right there. Elam obviously got the bucket that tied the game, but th that is tremendous execution and phenomenal coaching by Patrick Schneider. So 4.1 to play. If you're Joe Curtin, the beauty of this is you can 100% use Bryce Monroe as a decoy for this whole possession. The thing but that why, would you? <laughs> why, why, why would you? Why would you? I, I'm setting him as many screens as he needs to get open, let him go full court, and, and, and try and try to make a play. The Crusaders have to go all the way down the court. As Monroe will catch it back court, he'll split the defense, drives right wing, throws up a layup at the horn, nothing there, and we got five more minutes of basketball. And, and it was exactly what I called for, and I liked the play call. Jelani Clark just set him a screen. Monroe did what players always do in those full court situations. He starts on one side and he drags across to the other so that a defender is trailing him on the play to create a little bit of an opening and great awareness to get that shot off. I think he did get it off just in time, but also at half court, he didn't settle for a long shot. He came between two defenders and split them with his phenomenal handle and quickness. But we get four minutes now. Each team will get one additional timeout as we're now hearing here on the overhead announcements. But well, what a phenomenal game we have got here at Independence High School. What a phenomenal game indeed. Bryce Monroe had a look, as you mentioned, from the right side, just unable to draw rim. And now you get four more minutes of basketball. As we heard, nobody with more than three personal fouls. And this is what you play for right here. All season, these two teams have been going at it. And eight, uh, 25 games played for the Bells, 25 games played for the Crusaders, Crusaders, and it comes down to four minutes right here. It, it, we have not called a game together that has been greater than five points. That's the, that's the biggest margin that we have had so far. This is the first overtime game, but we had a buzzer beater at Santa Clara High School. We had a thriller between Valley Christian and Sarah. I mean, it, just phenomenal basketball being played at both ends. But by both teams here tonight. It's been a, a really great game to watch and to call. And hey, hey, we get four more minutes of free basketball, man. That No complaints on my part. No complaints indeed. Central Coast Sports Broadcasting always bringing you the best games of the week. So it will be Elam and Jelani Clark to take the tip. And Elam will win it back to Cruz. Danker will walk it up for the Bells. Danker with the left hand dribble. The Bells lost earlier this year in their last OT game against Sarah as Danker almost turns it over, throws it over Cruz and looks like Turner fight for it, but it'll be a possession 
to Reardon. So really a turnover on the opening possession for the Bills. Yeah, uh, just a bad pass by Danker, not on the same page with Cruz and Elam trying to make that entry pass to the high post. And, you know, Reardon now gets a stop in their first defensive possession. Didn't even have to really work for it. Monroe right wing, 56 all were tied, 3.30 to play. Monroe lost it, gets it back, finds Turner left side. Turner drives into Elam over to Clark. Clark in the ground, crossover, lost the ball on the deck. Ruth comes up with it. Ruth will push to Wolfloom, and he will be fouled. Just a collision there by Clark and Wolfloom. I believe that is the fourth on Jelani Clark, and it will be two free throws for number 35. And, and Jelani Clark at the other end just trying to break down his man, but I, I couldn't see who his defender was, but I, I think it might have been Cruz. Credit him for, for playing great defense. That's the third on Jelani Clark, not the, not the fourth. I thought it was the fourth as well, but at the other end, Clark just doing a little bit too much fancy dribbling, and he lost the ball, but Bellerman, again, defensively right now, is just doing a great job. They forced Monroe to give up the ball with a double team and got their hands on, on a would-be pass. It, you know, it, it's really just an overall team effort right now from Bellerman. Wolf Loom was shaken up after that fall. Referees had to ask him if he could shoot the free throw, and he responds with a make. So, Josh Wolf Loom, so far tonight, with three point or four points after that free throw. And knocks down the second one. 58-56, Bellerman up by two. Crusaders moving left to right. The number two seed versus the number three seed facing off here in overtime at Independence High. Here's Monroe left wing. Gives it up top to Clark. Clark right hand dribble working against Elam. In and out now spins middle. Finds up top Turner, deep three. Justice Turner in and out and a rebound taken by Danker. And that one halfway good. down, halfway it, up. It looked good from the get-go. Turner liked it as well, but not able to get the roll. Bellerman with the stop they need. Once again, not allowing Reardon any type of action on the offensive glass. Here is Danker. Hand off the Cruz. Offensive foul coming on Wolfloom. You ever notice how w w whenever screens our offensive foul is going the other way. The official always blows his whistle like five times in a second. It, it, it happens, I guess, for offensive charging fouls as well, but that's it. Like, o only offensive fouls get that. So once uh, Wolf Bloom heard the double whistle, he knew immediately it was going to be on him before the official even made the call. Monroe up top, 240 to play. Reardon down by two. Here's Ubaje dancing on Cruz into the lane, gives it left wing Clark. Clark will drive against Cruz, jumps in the air, finds Turner into the near corner. Turner up top, Clark. He'll fire, he'll thought about a three, thought he was gonna fire, drives instead to 14 feet, takes a jumper, and it's too strong. Cruz will bring down the board. And once you hesitate as a shooter, your confidence is never there until you can get rid of the ball and get it back. Or, or better yet, just wait for the next possession. You Danker. cannot hesitate. Crosses the timeline. Wilson all over and bounces it to Elam on the right block. A beautiful find from Quinn Danker and Ian Elam with another big bucket. He's 30 feet away from the basket. He's throwing a one-handed bounce pass through three defenders. Four-point lead for the Bells. Monroe, jumper near baseline, air ball. Wilson comes down with it, but he loses it off of Danker's foot out of bounds. Reardon with the ball and just not a smart shot there really from Bryce Monroe. It was double team, didn't have the angle, but a Another chance here for the Crusaders. 23 to shoot, down four, 152 to play. Here is Clark, left wing. Grabs right, goes left, working against Stanker. Gives it up top to Obaje. Obaje, one on one with Ruth. Goes by him, gets a step, layup in the lane, an air ball. Rebound, Wolf Bloom, who finds Stanker. And I like the no call there from the official. Ubaja went down, but there wasn't actually a whole lot of contact, if any. It was just an awkward contortion of. Duke Bodge's body. 126 to play, Bell's up four. Here's Cruz, down low, Elam, right block, layup is down. Ian Elam with 19 points, and it's a six point lead for the Bells. Reardon still yet to score here in overtime, 113 to play. Down by six, they need a three. Monroe will go to the rim, layup inside, gets fouled, and Bryce Monroe will walk to the line to shoot two free throws. And Monroe with a look of determination there, almost desperation, trying to get the ball from his teammates the moment he took it. He wasted no time getting to the bucket. I mean, this is a guy who obviously really wants to win this game, and he is playing like it right now. Here's Monroe's first one, rattles it home. Brace Monroe with 26 points on the night. Ian Elam, we mentioned he was the birthday boy. 
We didn't mention he would have 19 points so far as he has been absolutely fantastic. Second free throw coming from Monroe and he puts it home. 58 to 62, four point lead here for the Crusaders, 107 to play in overtime. Here is Danker, gets the inbound, crosses over against Clark, finds Cruz. Cruz with the right hand dribble, crosses the timeline against Abaje, gives it over to Elam left wing. Less than a minute to play, Bellerman up by four. Reardon needs to stop right here. Here is Danker, right wing over to Ruth. Ruth holds the ball at the hip, now dribbles and finds Cruz straight on. Bell's trying to use the whole 35. Cruz works against Clark, left hand dribble, now behind the back, looking for somewhere to go, hands off to Ruth. Ruth, up top, crosses over, gotta move the ball, down low Elam, right block, layup, oh, and he puts it home! Ian Elam with another one, and it's a six point lead for the Bells. Clark into the right corner, three ball, Bryce Monroe is too strong, or left it short correction, and we're gonna get a foul underneath it was Monroe going full in transition all the way to the right corner, tried from distance as Elon Elam picks up a foul. That is his fifth. So the guy with six of the eight points here in overtime for the Bells is gonna take a seat for the rest of the night. That's a big loss for the Bells if Reardon's able to mount a comeback. What a comeback it would be as Dominic Wilson will shoot free throws. 24.7 to play in the fourth quarter. Bellerman up by six. The winner will go on to play Sacred Heart Cathedral Friday at Santa Clara for the CCS Open Division Championship. As Wilson misses the free throw, but it's two shooting here for number 11. And, and fun tidbit for the listeners, Santa Clara assistant head coach Ryan Madry in the building tonight. Not sure exactly who he's taking a look at, but I've got my hunches. <laughs> Maybe the guy with 26. Perhaps. Here's a free throw coming for Wilson, and he knocks down the second one. So it's a five-point lead time here out, with 24.7. The Bells call time. Wilson. Reardon, you think most teams it's just foul off the inbound right here, Spencer. But Reardon's got some length. If they're able to force a trap, they can force a turnover and get the ball back here. We mentioned they went on that 5-0 run late in the first quarter with just a minute to play here, 24.7. This is an explosive offensive team that can score in an instant. Yeah, obviously shot clock is gonna be turned off here, but I, I don't think if you're reared in, you foul immediately. If they get it across the timeline, then I think you go to the foul. But you know, off the made free throw from Reardon, Bellerman's gonna be able to run the baseline. So we'll see if they utilize that in any significant way on the inbound, but if you're reared in, you wanna pressure the inbounder and you wanna get the ball into either one of the corners and then the person guarding the inbounder has got to get over trap immediately and everyone has to rotate super quickly before the offense can make their adjustments and get someone to an open space where they, where they can beat the press. So, you know, th it, it all happens in about three seconds or less. So it, it's really do or die right now. So it will be Bellerman versus Reardon, two teams Reared in 15 CCS championships in their history. Bellerman with 14. Sarah also has 14, but two of the top three teams in terms of number of CCS championships. Reared in has the most ever playoff wins with 83 in total. And Bellerman trying to get a win tonight and then get another one and tie the Crusaders. Reared in though still in this one trying to double. They give it to Wolfloom and Wolfloom is fouled immediately. Josh Wolfloom fouled by Ubaje as he will walk to the free throw line for the second time in overtime. Hit two earlier after getting fouled at 23.8 to play. Four, I, 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 get, I get the, I, I get there's only 24 seconds or so Joshua left Wolf in the game as it's now 23.8 on the game clock, but that, that was an immediate foul and I, 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 I just would have liked to see him go for one steal. If you get that one steal, and then you're able to score. Now you've got a one possession game, whereas you know, a, a fouling them to send them the line for two free throws just about guarantees they're gonna pick up at least one point. Wolf Flume hits the first one to make it six and rolls out the second one, cannot make it seven. Here comes Clark, 
driving. Now goes a Euro step over Danker, hands it off to Wilson inside, and Wilson finishes from the right block. A quick two for the Crusaders, and it's 61 65. Reardon down four. And what a beautiful overstep there from Jelani Clark. That ball went up high showcasing his athleticism, but also tremendous vision and skill to be able to get that ball to Wilson on the right block. And, you know, that's exactly what the doctor ordered for for Reardon. And if Beller, I, I assume they'll go back to the foul here. If Bellerman keeps missing free throws, quick twos are all you can need. I mean, you don't have to go for the three just yet. But I, again, I'm going to be interested to see whether or not Reardon comes out and tries to force a turnover before they foul. There's only 17 seconds left in the game so it could be a little bit of a risk but you have to balance that with giving your opponent one or, or two free points at the other end and you mentioned clark almost brought that ball on above dinker's head on oh, the crow step just i think it, it went over his head yeah i believe so that length of jelani clark will be lethal and that definitely in the state tournament as every team who qualifies here for ccs will or open division will play in the state tournament so no matter the outcome, neither team's season is over tonight. Although for the Crusaders and the Bells, they've been playing like it. 61 to 65, 17.1 to play here. Saw a play similar to this against Mitty Spencer in which Bellerman passed it to Danker, who also went out of bounds. Let's see if they run that again, and they will. So Good Danker call. will take it inbound, and the referee's not sure if you can do that, I think, and that is legal. It, it's a, it was a made basket, so there, there shouldn't be an issue with it. Reardon thought they had a turnover for a moment. So Danker will get the inbound, doubles, finds Cruz, and Cruz will just wait and get fouled. So Bellerman will not do some nifty inbounding and instead just ask Kieran Cruz to knock down two free throws and make it a six-point game. I, and I'm curious as to why, I think one of the officials must have forgot that it was a made basket because in that instance, you cannot pass the ball on the baseline, but it's perfectly legal to be in the court and then to run out of bounds on the baseline and to pass the ball there and then have that person inbound the ball for the first time. But it, it, it very, very curious that the officials were not on top of the, the fact that it was a made basket, which permits that. Made free throw or made basket, you can always run or pass on the baseline. Cruz. Unable to hit the first one. The second one drops home for number 21. The leading scorer here for the Bells as Kyle Lewis checks in for Gio Sasso. 14.2 to play Kyle here Lewis in overtime. 66 to 61, the lead for the Bells. So on, here is Monroe. Drives down the left alley, layup falling away. Air ball, rebound fought for. Lewis comes up with it, and Lewis is fouled with 7.4. And, and Bryce Monroe right there did not get the best shot that I think he could have. I, he recognized that he had to go up pretty quickly with his team down five, but he, he had just a little bit of room going down the left side. I thought he should have spun back to his right hand. I mean, even though he's driven left frequently tonight, he's wanted to use his right hand to finish. I'm surprised he didn't use his elite handle to, to just put a little crossover in there and get to the right side of the lane. So Lewis hits the first free throw, makes it a six point game with 7.4. Kyle Lewis with three points so far tonight as Coach Schneider will call time. Well for the Bells, they're 7.4 seconds away from playing the Sacred Heart Cathedral Fighting Irish. Spencer, is Reardon have any hope left in this one? It's not over until the clock says double zero, but it, it, it would be Reggie Miller versus the Knicks-esque. If, if Reardon were to formulate this comeback, I mean, Bellerman's got another free throw coming, and I don't think Reardon has any more timeouts. They don't, and, and Bellerman still has one. So it, it would require a miss, a quick three, and then a steal and a three just to send the game to another overtime. So it, it's not over until the fat lady sings, but it, this one is... It is a nearly insurmountable lead. And why these two teams, this game has been so, I guess, important in the CCS playoffs is because the winner will go play the bottom seed. And Sacred Heart Cathedral has proved they can beat Mitty. But there definitely is in the back of everyone's mind, okay, we win this one, we go play Cathedral, not a number one seed in Mitty. Lewis hits the free throw. Here's 
Wilson in transition, the three balls off the front of the iron, and the Bellarmine Bells will advance to their third straight CCS Open Division Championship game. They will go on to face Sacred Heart Cathedral Fighting Irish. We will be there Friday at Santa Clara as we, on your ride home, tune in to the Central Coast Sports Post Game Show. We will have stats, interviews, and insight, and more. Make sure that you listen to Central Coast Sports Player of the Game, all part of the Central Coast Sports Post Game. Keep us here on your ride home. Well, our next CCS broadcast, we will have the Open Division Finals as we get set for our post game here. We will. We would like to thank our sponsors here at Central Coast Sports Broadcasting: Netafim Drip Irrigation, Gonzalez Irrigation System, Coastal Gur Magazine, Black Construction. BSN Sports, Pomodoro Pizza, Vulcan Materials, Kevin Moore, Arnie Von Massenhausen, and of course, the Green Waffle. Well, Kieran Cruz will run to the locker room as he is happy that he got his team back to the CCS Open Division Championship. A Bellarmine team that struggled in the WCAL, only able to grab third place, but a disappointing season as they advance back to the CCS Open Division able to defeat Reardon, who they had lost to two times earlier in the year. Uh, and for the Crusaders, they will look ahead to the state championship game. Bryce Monroe interviewed early in the year after that win against Bellarmine. His goal for the season was a state championship for the Crusaders, and that goal is still a possibility in this season. 66-61, our final score. Player of the game, Spencer, who you got? It's got to be the birthday boy, Ian Ela, man. He led Bellerman with 21 points, but was just remarkably efficient. Did such a great job finding the openings and exploiting them against the reared and defense down low, who were not communicating as effectively as, as they needed to in order to win this game. But, you know, credit Elam. He had some tough finishes as well. He fought on the boards. He had five of those tonight. That was second only to Quinn Denker, who led the way with seven rebounds for the Bells. But... It, you know, Elam really, he, he had six of, he had six points in the overtime period. He hit some big shots, including the game tying bucket at the end of regulation out of that beautifully executed set. So, you know, credit to Elam, but really th this entire Bellarmine squad, we've been highlighting it throughout the night and how, you know, it, it's really a team oriented approach for these Bellarmine Bells. I mean, anyone can have a, a big night any night. They're not reliant on just one or two guys and they play really well together. They're scrappy. They fight, they play good deep, excuse me, good defense. They box out really well. I mean, they just did the little things supremely well tonight. And I, I think Reardon just came out a little bit flat-footed. They just weren't quite up for the game. They didn't make all the little hustle plays Bellerman did. And, you know, that's why they're advancing to the championship game on Friday up at Santa Clara University. And we get the final stats here. Kieran Cruz on the night, 15 points. Gio Sasso, 5. Elam with 21. He led his team. Quinn Danker with 10. Ridley Ruth with 3. Nate Grassman with 2. Josiah Ajike with 2. Ryan Trotson did not score but did play. Kyle Lewis with 4. And Josh Wolfbloom, the sophomore bringing up from that JV team, had 6. He had big minutes. But 9 of the 10 Bells who played Spencer put points on the scoreboard. Yeah. 4. And, 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 and it's just a credit to, to the type of basketball we've been describing. You know, they, they just get everyone involved. They're not looking for one particular guy to lead them or, or to take over or anything like that. They just play together with one another. They make the right pass to the open man, and they take good, smart shots. And, you know, it, it led them to victory tonight. We'll see if they can get it done once again on Friday against Sacred Heart Cathedral. And for Reardon, Justice Turner, 7. Deshaun Johnson did not score. Jelani Clark had 11. Bryce Monroe finished with 27 on the night. Shime Ubaje had 6. Dominic Wilson with 10 of his own. And Dante Anderson did not score. Interesting thing to note, 1 for 6 from the 3-point line was Reardon in the second half. 0 for 3 in overtime. They only had a one basket in all of overtime. Three of their points came from the free throw line, so really went cold at the wrong time. Yeah, they did, but you got to credit the Bellarmine defense and the adjustment that they made on Bryce Monroe, the star player for Reardon. I, I mean, we were hearing nothing but Bryce Monroe, Bryce Monroe, Bryce Monroe for about the first two and a half quarters, and then when they went to that zone approach and started to double-team Monroe most times when he touched it, there were a couple moments where he looked like he'd figure out how to beat it, how to find just enough room and dish to one of his teammates, but he wasn't able to do it consistently, and he never got the jump shot going again. 
like we saw early in the game. And, y you know, just credit Patrick Schneider and Bellerman for executing a, a brilliant defensive adjustment in the second half. One thing to note, Bells, we mentioned 14 points in the paint at halftime. They finished with 34 of their 66 in the paint. They only had 14 last time they faced Reardon. So an adjustment by the Bells. Let's attack them inside. It worked for them as we get set for this championship game. Friday, looking forward to Me and you have a broadcast, though, tomorrow. Pine Cupertino. I don't think I'm with you tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. I believe we are. I believe we are. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Tune in to Central Coast Sports Broadcasting tomorrow if you wanna. If you wanna be, we don't know who's going to be there <laughs> or <might> where. Be <laughs> <laughs> might be me. Might be Spencer. Might be both of us. Who knows? It will be a great game. I mean, that's all I can tell you. Oh, that that is that is a given at this point. <laughs> I mean, this this margin finished at seven points. That's the that's the biggest margin of victory we've seen so far. But not indicative of how close the game really was. It, uh, it, you know, it's a good thing that, that high schools don't have spreads to bet on because I <laughs> bet you this would be one of those, like, three, four-point spreads, but because of last-second <laughs> free throws and everything, it gets up to seven. You know, you've got those those people in Vegas watching that final three go up with two seconds from Dominic Wilson thinking, go in, go in. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> well, we want to give one more big shout-out to Independence High School for their hospitality. Bellarmine and Reardon High School and the Central Coast section and the WCL for their support and to 95.3 KRTY San Jose's hot country not only bringing you the very best in today's country music but offering high school sports as well as being the South Bay home of your Gordon Golden State Warriors thanks to Nate Deaton Nicole Woodson Jamie Paul and for more information go to their website at krty.com well that's gonna wrap us up here on tonight's YouTube live broadcast. Our player of the game, of course, Ian Elam, 21 points, some of the biggest buckets of the night as we will get set for our open division playoffs, which will continue here on Central Coast Sports Broadcasting. Tune in tomorrow for more playoffs. I'm Carlo Jimenez alongside Spencer McLaughlin, McLaughlin signing off here from Independence High School. One more time, our final score, Bellerman, 66, defeating Archbishop Reardon who had 61. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.